the years, Israelis also found new ways to use less water. And as always, they started in the desert. There's the story of the Arava. Sometimes as 20 millimeters of rain annual fall, very harsh climate. And still, thanks to drip irrigation, this became the vegetable barn of Israel. 65% of vegetable export out of Israel, mainly to Europe, is coming from the Arava. Today, even the driest parts of the desert are blooming with help from a process called drip irrigation. The idea is older than the state of Israel itself. When the first settlers came here, young people came from the city and they wanted to be farmers. And they came to Kibbutz Chatzirim and they faced many challenges. Arid land, high salinity, not enough water. And there was even a time when they considered moving to another place. But then Ben-Gurion came, who was a leader with a real vision, and he said, guys, if you want to move, it's okay, but further south, not back to the north. And we stayed here and we continued and we did some experiment, but still we were struggling. Then we met the guy who invented drip irrigation. That guy was an engineer named Simka Blas. He got the idea for drip irrigation after seeing a tree that was larger than the others around it. After digging around the roots, he found it was being watered by a leak in an underground pipe. So this gave him the idea, but it took him some years, actually until a plastic was introduced to start and, and make experiments with drippers that will emit water in small drops. And this is basically drip irrigation. Blas met the farmers of Kibbutz Hatzarim, and together they started a company called Netafim, which means drops of water in Hebrew. Soon they boosted their crop yield by 50% and used 40% less water to do it. Drip irrigation saves a lot of water producing more, getting more, yet not harming the environment. For almost half a century, the company has lived up to its slogan, grow more with less, not just in Israel, but in 110 countries around the world, from sugarcane fields in the Philippines to tea plantations in Tanzania. You know, India is now our number one country. The results, looking at the yield increase, were amazing. 50% of the farmers got an increase in yield between 25 and 50%. Another 25% of the farmers got an increase in yield of up to 75%. Nenafim even designed a system that works solely on gravity for places like Peru, where remote mountain farmers don't have electricity. The plant doesn't know the difference. The plant doesn't know that you don't have a $20,000 computer behind the dripper. And it works beautifully. Everyone is talking about water scarcity. 70% of the water that we have available in the world is used for agriculture. Now, if we save only 15% in agriculture, we can more than double the available water for drinking and sanitation. In Hebrew, we have a, a, a term which is called tikkun olam, which is fixing the world. And this is basically what drip irrigation does. This is my personal goal and challenge. 